Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel. And uh, it's sunny outside and about 30 degrees, but there's also about 28 inches of snow on the ground from the two snowstorms that we got. So it's a good day to stay inside and dye copy paper. So um, when I, I'm just experimenting with dyeing coffee paper and tea paper and ink paper. Um, this is about my third attempt um, at doing so. So my past attempts at dyeing paper turned out pretty well. Um, I got my um, research done um, with Crafting By Me um, website and I did a lot of research and there's a lot of YouTube videos out there on uh, dyeing paper. Um, but I found Edith's method worked really well for me. So let me show you some examples here. These papers here were done with rosehip tea. Now rosehip tea is red, but when I dyed these papers, they came out like a beautiful gray color. And I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, I thought it would be red, but it's gray. Um, but I like it and I like using it in my junk journals. Um, and if some of the papers have the darker dye on the edges, which is really nice. Um, and I need to perfect that. Um, and then the coffee dyed paper, I tried just straight coffee and then I tried coffee with baking soda and salt in it because I heard on one of the YouTube videos that that helps with the color, but I didn't notice any difference. But these turned out really well. They don't smell like coffee um, or the tea. So I really like these two and these came out to be like a light brown or tan color, which works really well in the junk journals. And then I experimented with ink. And apparently I have a heavy hand with ink um, because I wanted a wash and I ended up with some of these darker papers. Um, so I need to dilute the ink more but I will still use those I can use those papers for tags or emphoria or whatever but I really liked the tea and coffee better but we'll, we'll try the ink again as well so what you're going to need is you're going to need some sort of material to put down because this is a messy process so you need, I use packing material. This packing material comes in a lot of the items that we get in the mail and they kill a tree with it. And it was like, how can I use it? I was using it in my junk journals and I still do. Um, but it also makes a great um, messy, messy paper thing to put down to absorb the coffee and the tea and the dye. And then I use it in the junk journals after it dries. So um, it really doesn't go to waste and it gets some really cool patterns on it. And then for the paper, I buy the cheapest copy paper I can find. And so I bought from Walmart um, this ream of paper and it was probably like four bucks, $3.99, something like that, um, to use in my junk journals. And then of course we're uh, refurbishing our basement and I found this old old ream um, that we had and so now I'm utilizing this um, to use it up because I, I don't, didn't want to throw away a whole ream because it has brown on it so it's like archival <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be using and um, I was afraid that when I did it using this method um, that the papers would stick together, but they don't. And when they dry, they dry pretty flat, as you can see. I mean, they have a little bit of bubbling to them, which is nice. It's a nice feel, but they dry flat. You get a little, you know, 
fold in them here and there, but it just adds to the character of the paper. So um, they really dry flat and they separate when they dry. So pour yourself a cup of coffee and pour yourself a cup of coffee for your paper. Um, and we'll start with coffee. What I've been using is just Dollar Tree, which is now a dollar twenty-five tree. Um, but I got like five of these foam brushes for a buck. Now you would probably get them for a dollar twenty-five. But it's still a great deal. Um, these I've been using for a couple months, and I just rinse them out with water, and they're they're making it. They're worth the the um, dollar. For dollar twenty-five. Okay, so let's get started. So I have my cup of coffee here my, in my Mandalorian cup, and what I found was it's okay if the paper gets soaked. Um, you want to pull the liquid um, so you get different designs in the paper. So I just take my my brush and I saturate it in the coffee cup and just start painting on your paper and if it drips let it drip if it pulls let it pull I found with the tea and the coffee that the brush strokes seem to go away as it dries so this pooling here is okay and your paper is going to get saturated and what you want to do is flip it after you do the first side and go ahead and put the coffee on the other side. If you don't, it'll be white. <laughs> so once you have it down like that, leave it because you might, you know, shred the edges a little bit or whatever, which is okay because you're probably going to cut the paper anyway. And you're just going to get a new piece of paper and lay it on top. And go ahead and paint the coffee on top of the paper. And then you want to flip that piece of paper and lay it on top. Go ahead and saturate this. Um, it doesn't look like um, on scrapbooking with me that they saturate it as much as I do. But when I don't saturate it, it doesn't doesn't seem to get enough color in it. So if you have any suggestions on coffee dyeing or tea dyeing or ink dyeing paper, go ahead and leave them in the comments because um, I'm still learning this. These bubbles here are fine. You want I want that anyway in, on my paper. So we'll do some of these. And your paper underneath is going to get wet. It's going to be a mess. Be ready for the mess. Now I did try to coffee and tea stain my papers uh, using uh, 9 by 13 pan and dipping the paper in to the um, liquid and then you have a big mess then you have to uh, the other method is laying them out to dry somewhere or um, drying them in the oven well I, I don't really want to dry them in the oven um, you know it's like four pieces at a time and you have like an hour or so um, in the oven on low heat and takes forever um, so I dipped them and laid them out and you have to have the room to lay them out to dry and we have cats and dogs and kids and the papers get laid on and slept on and I didn't like that either so if you get a fold in the paper like this, that's okay. Um, it just adds to the character of the paper. This process seemed to work well for me. Um, 
because I can let them dry in a pile and yeah, it's going to take a couple days. Um, but that's why I start the process of dyeing the papers that I want for my junk journals before I start creating my junk journals. That way the paper's ready when I'm ready to make my signatures. So I'll come down and once a day and sift through the papers and rearrange them um, because I'm curious how they look. Um, you can put doilies in between your papers um, and stain the doilies as well. And it leaves nice um, patterns on your paper. I haven't done that yet. And maybe we can do that uh, another time. So I'll finish these coffee ones and then I'll come back and do the um, rose hip tea um, papers. Okay, so I'm done with the coffee papers that I'm going to do in this round. So as you can see, this is pretty saturated. If you try to lift the papers now, you're going to get some rippage. I don't find a problem with that, but I just don't lift them up either. Just leave them like this. You're going to take this mess and you're going to set it somewhere to dry. Let's see, you got a big mess underneath. Um, you're going to need paper towels to clean that up and then we'll move to the rose hip tea. Okay, I have my coffee papers securely put somewhere where they can dry for the next couple days. And we'll come back and look at them in a couple days so you can see. Okay, so I wiped up all that coffee. We'll put down some more packing material that I use and we'll do the rose hip tea. I don't clean my brushes out. I kind of like the transition papers from one medium to another. So this is the rose hip tea. See how it's red? But when it dries, it dries a nice purplish gray color. Whoops. I only want one piece of paper at a time. Oops. There we go. I might just leave the tea bag in there. Um, I think some people use the tea bags to um, dye their paper to brush the tea around. Might be a good idea. I don't know. I haven't done that yet. Um, but it goes on red and it comes out gray. See how it's red? And I think it's a neat color. Uh, I'm going to try um, different herbal teas as I delve into this paper staining um, activity. And you can put doilies in between or cutouts or whatever. Um, it looks like it turns out great. I'm going to have to try that. I haven't. I was just trying to say, think of how can I dye my paper? Because you go through so much paper in these junk journals. And I was using white paper. And then I went and did colored paper. Um, colored copy paper. And before you know it, you have reams and reams of paper. And they're not the colors that you want to use. Um... You want something more vintage looking and you can buy stained paper on the internet or Amazon or wherever people make them to sell and I didn't want to buy them so this is the big experiment so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this rose hip tea um, and then we'll move on and play with um, ink. 
Okay, here's the um, rosehip tea papers. I'm going to take over and put them somewhere where they can dry for a couple days. And, you know, you can go, <laughs> this is addicting. You can do a whole ream in no time. Um, so, um, I thought that this was something that, this activity was something that, would really help me with my junk journals and the paper for the signatures to be um, feel um, good. They have a texture to them that um, is pleasing, at least for me, and um, gives you a variety of papers that you can put into a signature that you don't have to pay an arm and a leg for. So um, let me put these aside to dry and then we'll play with the ink. Okay, so we're going to play with ink. Ink is, not only is it messy like the coffee and tea, it will also stain your hands. But I don't care about that. You can put gloves on if you want. Um, that um, works to help keep your hands from getting stained. I just poured the tea out of here and we'll use this cup. And we'll do a small amount. I'm just putting water into the cup. And then I have these inks. And I got these inks from scrapbook.com. I just went and looked for the um, cheapest inks. Um, these are used to refill or re-ink stamp pads. And I kind of sort of stuck to the basic colors. I have... Postal Blue, and I have Daffodil, and I have Mixed Berry, and I have Deep Sea. So, um, the reason I got these things was to try um, to see how they work. This is my second attempt. So, they were too dark before. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So I put ten drops of deep sea in water. I have my paper and I have the same brush that I was using before. Okay, so let's see how dark this is. Oh, that's not bad. So, I'm going to get the periphery of the paper here. And this will stain your hands once again. So, if you don't want that evidence on your fingers, um, I would suggest just some cheap disposable gloves. And I want this light color um, for my junk journals or for my use. Um, you can make it darker just by adding more dye. I thought that I would need a lot of dye the first time I did it. And again, it's okay if it pools. It's okay if it um, creases your paper you want some of these designs in your paper. So it kind of looks like a little bit like parchment paper when you're done. Um, when I was playing with this before, I was trying to dilute it with alcohol, water, and then I made the mistake and grabbed oil, and that was a mistake. Uh, make sure you don't get oil into these. That was a mess. Um, but this is alcohol-based dye. And I really like this color better using less ink in the water. You can um, experiment just like I'm doing here. So I'll finish this um, deep sea 
color and then we'll move on to another color. Okay, so I finished the blue. So I don't clean anything. I'm just going to put some little bit of water in there. Like I said, I like the transition colors. Um, let's see what the daffodil will do. That was about 10 drops before. Three, four. Boy, this is hard coming out. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, because I like those transition colors in between one color and the other. I will mix this up a little bit. Look at that. But if you don't like the transition colors, you can most certainly get a clean brush and a clean cup and keep your um, colors from being polluted by other colors. You can most certainly do that. Of course, yellow and blue make green, so I'm getting a little bit of a green here. That's okay. It's unique in my eyes. So I'll finish this up. We'll start another color. Okay, we're just finishing up there. So now we're going to get more water in our cup. Just a little bit, just a couple ounces because um, we're experimenting in about 10 drips, two, three, four. All right, and this is the mixed berry. Look at how that is in the water. It's weird. Okay, but I kind of like the end result. I like. And make sure you don't lift up these papers because they'll rip. Just gonna let them lie. Just let them lay there for a couple days. Okay, we're finishing up here. I'm just going to pour the last bit on here. I like that. Okay. So now we're going to set this somewhere to dry. I'm not going to do the other color. Um, I'm going to set this somewhere to dry for a couple days. And then um, when my paper is dry, we'll come back. And we'll separate it and look at the paper to see how it turned out. Um, so I was needing some papers for my junk journals and we'll, this is going to work out great. So just set this somewhere to dry if you're doing it and, um, we'll see you in a couple days. See the result. Thanks. Bye.